there forever. Come on, y'all, stand on your feet. Sing it with us. That is the kingdom. That is the kingdom. Power and the glory. Forever and ever. Finish my story. Noel, sing it. If you ever wonder what heaven looks like, look you like me, you. If you have a question, what heaven sounds like, just let it fill the room. Everybody say. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now we will have our lessons from the scripture reading. Um, the Old Testament will be read by Jalen Bentley and our New Testament will be read by Takiya Glass. Chapel. Say, I'll be reading from the Old Testament reading of Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it reads The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk into the light of the Lord. For the word of God, for the people of God.
today I'll be reading the New Testament, Matthew 24, 36 through 44. Just please, oh. <laughs> but what about that day and hour? No one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For, all, for as the days of Noah were, so will be coming of the Son of Man, for as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So two will be coming of the Son of Man, the two will be in the field, one be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding milk together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep Awake, therefore, for you to do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night, but the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let this house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. For the word of God is for the people of God. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. We just want to ask any youth choir members, any children, can y'all come on up and sing with us? Come on, any youth, any young adults, that means any age. Age, young adult is 21 and up, right? <laughs> Amen. Come on, any youth, young adults, children, come on. He has done marvelous. Mm -hmm. 
morning, Andrew Chapel. Good morning. Um, next, we are going to have our Advent candle meditation presented by. Actually, I think we're gonna have a video first. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're gonna have a video first, and then um, an Advent candle meditation presented by Justin he Justice Henry, Andrew Lafleur, and Ian Lafleur. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Now we're going to have the Advent candle meditation. David said in the 122nd Psalm, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. In this age of troubles and trials from wars, inflations, attempted coups, violence, sickness, and disease, the word of God spoken through David promises the hope for the world. We are glad whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged in on or tuned in. We are glad to be in one more time. Like David, we are glad to be here in this place, with this community, with this family. The presence of God invokes a joyful hope of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways, that we may talk in God's path. Isaiah 2, chapter 2, verse 3. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored, as we watch and wait with all of God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Our hope is in the Jesus who came and is coming again. Now let us join in singing this hymn of praise. Come thou fount of every blessing. Thank you. 
please stand on your feet. Let us stand. with us this morning. He walks kind of uh, straight and tall. <laughs> kind of got that walk like Uncle Sam has been um, asking him to do things. <laughs> and we are glad to have Lazarus Hathaway with us this morning, this young Marine. <laughs> amen, amen. Come on, let's show him some love. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Praise God. Praise God, praise God. As we would prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, there are just a couple of folk that I wanted to make sure we lifted up. Um, Willetta Hendrick's sister, who we had uh, shared her concerns with you last Sunday. Uh, she was on a ventilator in the hospital there. I think in Oklahoma City, but she's off the ventilator now. Amen. She's off the ventilator now. And we thank God. They're even talking about uh, trying to send her home or get her out of the hospital in the next couple of days and maybe get her into rehab either in a facility or at home. So let's continue to pray for Willetta and her sister. Also, I would invite us to lift up Brother Elix Carter, who is home uh, this morning. At least I know yesterday they were talking of sending him home. Uh, Elix had a, a stroke earlier this week and was in the hospital for a few days. Um, they also discovered that there were some other concerns with his heart. And they're going to treat those with medication and hopefully... 
I was talking with Betty, Sister Carter, Coach Carter, uh, late yesterday uh, evening. And at that time, uh, she was hoping that uh, they were saying that they were going to release him, hopefully, that day. So let's be in prayer for Brother Elix uh, and pray that he will uh, recover and gain all of his strength and be back with us really soon. Then also, I just invite you to pray with my dad. Both Elix went into the hospital on Wednesday, and my father, who is uh, 96, went into the hospital on Wednesday. Um, they had some fluid around his heart and um, some issues with some swelling and fluid that they're trying to get off of him. So uh, dad is still in the hospital, and uh, we're praying uh, for him, so just I want to lift up James Reed, my dad, uh, today that we would be in prayer for him. And of course, there may be others, so if you would call the names of your loved ones, just go ahead and speak their names into the atmosphere. If they are co-workers or friends, uh, call their names. I know Sister uh, Cornelia Smith is going to have uh, uh, cataract surgery, and we'll pray for her as she prepares for that. I think she's already had one and going to have another. And let's be in prayer for all of our fam family and friends that are traveling, whether flying or on the highways. Let's be in prayer for them as we pray, not only for our nation, but for our, for our world. Lazarus, won't you lead us in prayer? God, may you please bless all the people that are needing your blessings right now. Everybody who do not believe in you, continue to bless them even though they don't know that you're there with them. God, please just continue giving everybody the health and wellness that we all need to continue on living. God, I would like to thank you for all the opportunities you have given us as we continue to get older and continue to still learning things, even though we left middle school, high school, elementary school, we are still continuing to learn that you are still with us and that you still have many things that we still need to know and to can you help us as we create families, friends, brothers, sisters. God, I would just like to thank you that you are there with us. Amen. Try with the fly to a place. 
Love. Let's show our young people some love and appreciation. Amen, everybody. Our love for them and our appreciation for them as they stand in leading us this morning. On this fourth Sunday, we've been celebrating the anniversary of the church all month long as we celebrate 147 years. We thank God for his blessings on this place that he has this church he's placed in this community for 147 years and we still are standing and serving the lord amen we heard from this morning the future of the church these young people these young christians that are serving the lord they are leading us today and also this is the first sunday of the season of advent on the Christian calendar, this is the first Sunday of the year. On the Christian calendar, the first Sunday of Advent marks the first Sunday of the year. So, Happy New Year. <laughs> happy Christian New Year. <laughs> amen, amen. Happy Christian New Year to some folk. And others probably already started their New Year celebration Wednesday night when they, uh, uh, they were working with the fifth on the, uh, anyway, somebody will get that on the way home. They were working with the fifth. 
I also want us to be in prayer with and for uh, Brother Cleve. Is Brother Cleve back there? Cleve and I were speaking this morning, and I know for the last uh, couple of weeks he had been had some health challenges, but he said, uh, Reverend Reed, I'm coming this morning, and thank God I can see Cleve right back there. Amen. Amen. And Cleve, I'll tell you again, if there are any issues, I recommend Jesus. <laughs> Amen. If Jesus can't do it, anybody know that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't mind, I would ask if the communications team would put that uh, passage of St. Matthew back on the screen. A couple of verses wanted to share with you as we would um, look at this text this morning. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus began speaking to them. He says, but of that day and that hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son of God, but only the Father, our God in heaven. For as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah, till the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them away. So too, will be the coming of the Son of Man. I'll stop right there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And, and keep, those, keep that passage handy. I'm going to uh, use that again in our text later on uh, in this message. Let's bow our heads. And now, may the thoughts of our mind and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, O oh Lord, our help, our hope, our strength, and our Redeemer. Let the people of God say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. There's an old Advent song, that uh, a song of the church we would sing from time to time. You know it. We heard just a little bit of it today. It, it simply goes, Hark the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world. Glory, Jesus, the light of the world. Won't you join with me and sing just a little bit of that old song? Hark the herald angels sing. It, what, how, you, are you with me? Yeah. Oh, different one, different one. Go, go ahead. Uh, you want me to start? I'll start it again. I'll start it again. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to go up. I'm going to take it up a key then. I'll start it again. Go ahead. Hark the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world. Glory to the newborn King, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, hark the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world, glory to the newborn King, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, 
beautiful light Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright Shine all around us by day and by night Jesus, the light of the world We walk in the light Beautiful light Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright Shine all around us by day and by night Jesus, the light of the world Hark the herald angels sing Jesus, the light of the world Glory to the newborn King Jesus, the light of the world We walk in the light Beautiful light Come where the dewdrops of mercy Shine bright Shine all around us By day and by night Jesus, the light of the world Amen. I want to talk about Jesus, our hope for tomorrow. Jesus, our hope for tomorrow. It's interesting here that in this text, Jesus was walking alone. He and the disciples had been into the city of Jerusalem and they had made preparations, arrangements for the Passover meal that they would share on that Thursday night in the upper room. And as they were walking back by the temple, Ira, Angela, uh, Sister Walker will remember, Sister Lois Pert will remember the top, the walls of the tower of the of the temple, and how high the retaining walls were. Jesus walking by those tall walls. Then upon that foundation, the temple stood, and it stretched seventy feet into the air. A huge edifice that could be seen by travelers from miles around because of the, the gleam from the walls and the spire that reached up to heaven. Jesus was walking by those walls when one of the disciples asked, when will the end be? They were, they were facing trouble there. The city was occupied, the country, the nation was occupied by the Roman army. They wanted to know when would the end of all of that stuff be. Wars were being fought and things were going on and, and Jesus was talking about dying and, and going away and coming again. And so their minds were thinking about when will the end be. And as they were questioning him, when will the end be, Jesus turned to them as they were walking by those walls and he said, as for that hour... No one knows, not the angels who listen and wait for God to give instructions, who wait for God to tell them what to do. They didn't know. Jesus said, not even the Son of God who knows everything that the Father knows, but this one thing, he said, not even the Son knows when the end will be. Only one person knows when the end will be, and that's God. Jesus went on to say, you see these walls behind us? These walls will be, they'll be torn down. He said, this building, and they thought he was talking about the temple. He said, this building will be torn down, and in three days, it will rise again. They didn't understand it, so they asked, well, when will the end be? 
They were facing trouble. And that's when Jesus began explaining it will be like it was during the days of Noah. During the days of Noah, young folk, do you know the story of Noah? Do you know? You, you, you know how everyone was having fun during the days of Noah. During the days of Noah, they were shopping because they were happy. They were going to the malls and, and buying things to give to each other. And, and they were planning marriages. They were getting married and giving in marriage and receiving in marriage. And they were celebrating. Did everybody have a great Thanksgiving? You gathered with family? Had a great celebration? Jesus said, it was like that during the days of Noah. Everybody was having fun and, and, and folk were giving and shopping and buying and going and traveling and gathering and marrying and looking to the future. But God had told Noah, build a boat. Noah said, what do you mean, a boat in the desert? There's no water here. God said, Noah, just build a boat. And do you remember, Noah worked on that boat day after day. And people laughed at Noah because Noah was building a boat in the desert where there was no water. But Noah kept building. He kept building. They said, Noah, why are you building that boat? Noah said, God said, it's going to rain. And they laughed and said, Noah, there are no clouds in the sky. What do you mean rain? Besides that, we're here in the desert. But Noah kept building. And then one day, say one day. One day, one day the skies got dark. One day the clouds came up. One day in the midst of the troubles that everyone was facing. One day, while wars were being fought over there and sickness was breaking out over there, one day, while people were getting married and giving in marriage, one day, while they were shopping and buying and gathering and celebrating, one day, the clouds came up and it began to rain. You all know what happened next. It rained. The song says, 40 days and 40 nights without stopping. Every time they looked, the rain kept dropping. And it rained so until God finally told Noah, go into the boat and close the doors. They wondered, Jesus, when will the end be? And right now, the world is just like that. We just spent this, this last few days, this week, gathering and going. This was only the second time that I've ever traveled for Thanksgiving. And I'm 65. But this is the only time, second time I've ever traveled for Thanksgiving. People were going and do you know the highways were clogged with folk? It, it took two hours to go one mile. The highways were clogged. People are traveling. The malls are filled. Everywhere you went, people were gathering, things going on. But right now, there's trouble all around the world. People are complaining about inflation, but we're still spending money. <laughs> Did you find your uh, Black Friday deal, anybody? And, and get ready, Cyber Monday is coming. There's some Cyber Mondays, some Cyber Monday deals coming. The world right now might seem like a mean place. Every time we turn on the news, we hear stories about someone being killed. Unfortunately, it seems like every time the news comes on, there's a story about a black young man or a black young woman being killed by violence or taking someone else's life because of foolishness. Everywhere we look, right now in this nation, it seems like racism, it doesn't seem like it, we know it, racism is on the rise. People are openly being racist and they don't care if you know it or not. Right now, around the world, trouble is here and 
we see the stories coming out of China where they're revolting because they've been on lockdown because of COVID and people are tired of being locked down and they want to end the lockdown and get back out. Trouble everywhere around the world. It seems like the world is a mean place with a hopeless future when we hear them talking about the world and climate change. You would think that we would know by now that if we want to change the climate, we first have to stop cutting down all the trees. That really is number one. We have to stop, but everywhere you look, right here on 154, on, on the highway right up here, across from Quick Trip, it seems like the trees just can, everywhere you look, trees are being, you would think that we would have learned our lessons, but the world seems like a mean, crazy place with a hopeless future. And that was what the disciples were experiencing. The Romans were mistreating them. There was chaos everywhere. And they turned to Jesus and asked, when will all of this end? It seems hopeless. There's no future for us. And Jesus turned to them. And if you put those words on the screen up there, he said, it's going to be like the days of Noah. People are going to think that everything is all right. They will be so comfortable with the challenges, so comfortable with war, so comfortable with death, so comfortable with violence, so comfortable that they're having dinners and shopping and going everywhere in the midst of all of that as though it's an everyday ordinary thing and it will be like it was during the days of Noah when the words of the scripture get on the screen. <laughs> well, in case the words don't get up there, I know the words. In the days of Noah, it started raining, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. Move on to the next verse. Move on to the next one. And he went into the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. And so, too, will be the coming of the Son of Man. And during this season of Christmas and Thanksgiving and holidays, our mind, I'm not through with the scripture, leave it up there. In this season, we will be focused on fun and joy and gatherings, but don't be deceived. It was just like this when Jesus came the first time. Now, the message of Advent is that in the midst of all that's going on, do not forget that the one who came, that's Jesus, is coming again. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And that's a shouting place right there. You know, if you're one of those that's out there cheating, if you're one of those that's out there mistreating folk, if you're one of those that's out there hating on others, if you're one of those that is, that, that's out there engaging in, encouraging violence, then you won't like it when the Son of Man returns. It's bad news for those that have rejected God. The coming of Jesus is bad news for those that have turned their backs on God. But it's good news. Somebody say good news. The return of Jesus is good news for those that are waiting on the Lord. Anybody in here waiting on Jesus? We're waiting on God. Don't you get tired of being nice to folk that won't be nice to you, but you keep on being nice anyway because you love the Lord and God said, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Don't you grow weary when you're treating others right, but they won't treat you right, but because you got the love of God in your heart, you keep on treating them right. Don't you get weary of doing the right thing when others around you will not do the right thing, but you continue you to do the right thing because you believe in the Lord and you're waiting. We may get weary, but don't you get weary. You hold on and don't give out. Continue to love the Lord because Jesus is coming again. And that's good news. It's good news. Because when Jesus comes, 
We won't have to put up with folk talking down to us and looking down on us and mistreating us anymore. When Jesus comes, we won't have to deal with the abuse and the mistreatment, the oppression and wars when Jesus comes. My message today from the Lord is to let you children know this world may seem like a mean place. Our parents have to be concerned and our grandparents are concerned about us every time we go to school because there's some bullies at school and then there's some mean folk that if you're walking home alone, they might pick you up and abduct you. We're concerned about that. But here's God's message for all of you as children. Don't give in to, don't you become a bully just because somebody bullies you. Don't you mistreat someone just because they mistreat you. Amen. Don't you mistreat a teacher just because teachers mistreat us. You see, I remember when I was in school, school that's a long time ago. <laughs> but I remember, I, I think, is that our commission, is that Commissioner Turner? Oh my God, I got to preach a good sermon today. <laughs> Commission, it's good to have you and the, uh, and the First Lady with us. Amen. I remember when I was in school. When I first went to school, first through third grade, I went to the segregated black school, R.L. Cousins. And, and I was just one of the black kids there, and the teachers treated me like they treated everybody else. But in the fourth grade, I went into the integrated school. I remember my fourth grade English teacher, Mrs. Johnson. She would call on all the other students, but she didn't call on me. And when the other students gave the right answer to something, oh, she was always, oh, that's so good. But when I gave the right answer, she didn't say anything. And you know, it, did, it didn't hit me right there. But if that keeps, it's like mist like a sprinkle. You don't get soaking wet at first, but if you stay out there long enough, you become saturated and, and, and affected by that stuff that they keep tossing on you. I remember in the fifth grade, my fifth grade math teacher, Mr. Johnson. And, and I remember how the white kids would talk in school and they would do everything in the classroom. And I just turned to one of my friends, my cousin, Andre. I didn't have my pencil that day. And I asked Andre, if, do you have a pencil? And Mr. Johnson said, Donald, come up here. I just asked Andre, do you? I was whispering. Mama said, don't you go to school over there acting a fool. I was afraid of mama and daddy and grandpa more than Mr. Johnson. So I whispered, Andre, do you have an extra? Mr. Johnson said, come up here. And he pulled out his paddle and he went to work on me. Now I'm thinking, but Mr. Johnson, th th there Susie is over there and she's cutting up and you haven't said a word, but I asked for a pencil to try to keep up and you want to paddle me? And you know, I didn't say a word because mama said, don't you talk back. Because if you talk back, I will come over there and I'll paddle you myself. I remember when I was in school. And then when we finished, I remember Mr. Hodges, our football coach. And he was a real good guy. Real good guy. But when I got to elementary school, I remember Mrs. Frances Beale in the eighth grade. Mrs. Beale was as black as, she was a dark complexion woman. <laughs> and there I am, Brother Turner, I'm there in math class and I'm struggling trying to get that because I remember in fifth grade when I would raise my hand to ask Mr. Johnson, uh, how do you do this? I would get ignored. And I'm struggling with that. And Mrs. Frances Beale almost bring tears to me right now. She walked over and she said, Donald, I see you're struggling with this, but I'm going to tell you right now, you can do this. Oh, you can do this. Now, here's what you have to do. 
Do you know when I graduated from high school, what I, be, what I majored in when I went to Georgia State University was mathematics, and I got my degree, a bachelor's of science in mathematics because Mrs. Bill, who looked like me, looked at me and said, I see something in you, and you will be all right. You can do it. What I'm trying to tell you, young folk, is that God has placed something in you. And I don't care what the world says about you. They may want you to be an athlete and run a football like Herschel Walker and act a fool like Herschel Walker, but you can be better than that. Don't, don't be a Herschel Walker, be a LeBron James, who is an athlete but has an excellent mind, who with his mind not only plays ball, but he plays and challenges the world and builds schools and other things and uplifts people. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter that you're young. God has put something in you. Some of you may have heard the story just a few weeks ago. There was a 30-year-old mother who was pregnant and she uh, found herself in labor three weeks early. And there she is at home in labor three weeks early and she's, she's frantic. And while she is wondering what to do because she's got her 10-year-old daughter there with her and a younger daughter there with her. And there she is three months early and having a baby. And nobody's around to help her. Her 10-year-old daughter went to the phone, picked it up, Call 911. She said to the 911 dispatch operator, my mother is having a baby. The baby is coming too soon. What do we do? The dispatch operator began giving that person on the phone instructions. And the girl told her mother all the instructions. And when her mother decided that she didn't want to follow the girl's instructions, the little girl imitated her mother and she said now I told you here's what you need to do now you do what I tell you <laughs> yes she did well, they do it. when the 911 EMS people got there the little girl was sitting there came to the door holding the baby in her arms that had come early that 10-year-old girl had delivered her own newborn little sister. And when the officer came to the door, he said he was shocked because he thought he was talking to an adult on the phone. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that just like that little girl, did what she was instructed to do when you follow God's word and when you trust in the Lord with all your heart and when you live every day knowing that if you do what God says, God will take care of you. God will make a way out of no way. He'll use you because there is hope. Jesus is our hope for the future. I'm just about done, but let me talk to my teenagers. Just because you're a teenager, don't think that God doesn't see something in you. Just because you're, you are a young adult, don't think that God does not have a preferred future for you. Pastor said a preferred future. You may select your own future, but Jesus has a preferred future for you. And that future does not, I know sometimes we don't want to do all that God wants us to do. We want to be young and, and live our lives and have our fun. But when God sees something in you, he won't leave you alone until you say yes. And never, ever, ever think that you are too young for God to use you. Some of you don't believe me. There was a young lady in the Bible, her name was Mary. She was, on, she was between 13 and 15 years old. And while she's 13 years old one day, going to the well to draw water, an angel, that word angel 
in Greek, it's, it's, it's spelled euangelion, which means angel or messenger. The messenger came, a messenger came and said, Mary, God has seen you, and he's decided he's going to use you. God is going to use you to bring salvation to the world. Now, what if Mary had said, but, but tell God, I haven't gone to my first prom yet. I, I wait till after my first prom. What if Mary had said, I haven't even had my first date's kiss yet. I haven't kissed anybody yet. I haven't even gone on my first date. What if Mary had said, I'm planning to get with my girlfriends next weekend, and we're going out and back that thing up, and we're going to shake it like it's real. <laughs> What if Mary had said, I'm not ready for you to use me yet. Let me live my life the way I want for a little while. And then that is, but that's not how God works. God will come to you when you least expect it. And what God asks you to do, folk will laugh at you sometimes. You have some friends that are laughing at you because you went to church this morning. They went out last night, they stayed too long, got in too late, and they could not get up this morning, and they thought that was all right, and are laughing at you because you're in God's house. Lazarus read that scripture this morning. Don't you know he has some friends that are laughing at him? Man, you went back home, and you went to church, and you ushered, and you actually got up there reading. We were out last night trying to turn out the lights in the city, trying to drink up everything we could, and there you are trying to be a goody-goody for God. But when God sees something in you, he won't leave you alone. And he spoke to Mary and said, Mary, this is what I'm going to do. It shall come to pass. <laughs> and Mary had the good sense to say, whatever you desire, that is what I will do. And Mary was so in love with God. Mary was so delighted to do what God wanted her to do. She began singing and saying, my soul praises you. I know I'm unworthy. I know you don't, I know I don't deserve you. I know you can find somebody else, but thank you for looking on me. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for deciding that through me, you would bring the those who are powerful down and lift up those that are weak. Thank you. Because Jesus is our hope for the future. And I'm just trying to tell you as we come to an end of our Thanksgiving holiday and some of us will go back to school and some of us are getting ready to go to school. And don't you think that just because you try to go to school over in California that we won't have our eyes on you. I don't care where you decide to go to school, you know, you all can't stay off social media, so Rev gonna be watching to see what you're doing. But wherever you go, know that God will use you if you keep yourself for him. You can't live with the world and walk with God. In fact, you can't go with God and stay where you are. When God says, come out, you have to come out. When God says, stand still, then stand still. When God says, wait on me, then wait on the Lord. I like what David said. David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Enemies might surround you, but wait on the Lord. Trouble might come against you, but wait on the Lord. Sickness might knock at the door, but wait on the Lord. Folk might hate you because of the way you look, but wait on the Lord. They may talk you down because you came from Atlanta or you came from Jonesboro, but wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will is there anybody in here that knows he will strengthen your heart he will show up he will lift you up he will make a way out of no way he will put you on top of the world he will he will he will God will God will I know that sometimes in life, life can become hard. But the darkest hour 
is just before the day. Hmm. The darkest hour is just before the day. And I know my God will surely make a way. He put food on the table. My hungry soul he feeds. God can. He will. Let me say that again. The darkest hour is just before the day. And I know my God will surely make a way. He put food on my table, my hungry soul. He feeds God can He will My invitation today is an invitation to remind you that the future is yours because God can do anything but fail and I don't care what kind of trouble the world brings to us, nor challenges that you may face. I remind you of this one thing. Jesus is our hope for the future. For all things with him, all things, all things are possible. Let's stand on our feet. I want to give this invitation. If there's anyone in this house that has not accepted Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins, if there's anyone that doubts that you can, that God will show up when, when you need him, I want to invite you to walk down this aisle today. If you have not accepted Jesus, if you have not made up your mind, Lord, I believe in you and I'm inviting you to come into my life to wash my sins away and forgive me of sin. If you have not made that decision, I'm inviting you to make that decision today. There's only one person, only one person that can guarantee eternal life. It's not your mother, it's not your father, it's not your sister, it's not your brother. There's only one person that can guarantee you eternal life. We'll all grow up. We all will pass away one day. And when we have to stand before God in the judgment, there's only one person that can guarantee you that God will say, stay over here on my right with everyone that will be with me forever. And that's Jesus Christ. If you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then walk down this aisle today. Friends that are watching us virtually, there's only one question we're asking. If you had to stand before the Lord in judgment before the rising of the next sun, are you sure that God would say to you, stand here on my right with those that will be with me forever? If you are unsure that God would say, stand on my right, then pray this prayer with me. Let's all bow our heads. And if you are ready to receive him, pray this prayer. Oh God, I confess that I have tried to save myself but could not. I confess, oh God, that I am a sinner, that I have not always done your will and not always lived by your word. Have mercy on me. Come into my heart let Jesus come into my life right now and forgive me of every sin. For I accept Jesus as the Son of God. 
And I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that he got up on the third day. Now, Lord, thank you for that salvation you've given me even in that short moment. And Lord, I pray now that you'll use me to bring glory and honor to your name. Use me to serve you wherever I am. Use me to be your servant in every place that I go. And I will be so careful to live my life in such a way that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you today. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. Yeah. The joy of the Lord, the scripture says, is our strength. And when your joy is in God, then you will always be joyful. You'll always have some strength. Because God will never leave you. You know what Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. I've enjoyed this. This has been grand and great. Um, let's, let's pause and receive now our offering today. And those of you that are worshiping with us online and those that are here, there are four ways that we can give our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. You can give electronically. You can go to our web page, click on the button that says donation or giving, and follow the prompts, and they'll guide you in giving to the Lord. You can write a check and mail it to us at 122 Waterson Street, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30236, which is our church address. Or you can even mail it to our post office box number, which is 1437 Jonesboro, 30236. And those of you that are present, we can give at at the close of the worship, the ushers will be waiting to receive our offerings. Um, and if you're living locally, you can always call and, and uh, come by the church and bring your offerings here. We are so thankful for you. We are thankful for your generosity. For because you give, we are able to feed the hungry through our food pantry that we call Share. And we feed hundreds of people because you give because of your generosity we're able to help right now even as the war is still going on in the ukraine we have people on the ground that are helping to feed them and provide essentials for them because you give because you give we're able to we built the africa university and we still support africa university because you give because of your generosity we support hbcus right here in North Georgia and we have three HBCUs that are United Methodists in origin that was started by and are still United Methodist schools. Does anyone know what those three are? Clark Atlanta University! That's right, Clark Atlanta University, one of the anchor schools of the Atlanta University Center. Anybody know another one? Payne College down in Augusta, Georgia. That's where Dr. Luther Felder has been everything over there. And Dr. Felder is no Luan, Luan Knowles' father. Amen, amen. That's her dad, Dr. Quincy Felder, over there at Payne College. And he's been there for years. Anybody know the third one? Gammon Theological Seminary. Gammon. The School of the Prophets. When you give, we support HBCUs that are United Methodists right here, and we help to provide scholarships. So give, be generous, and let's continue to lift up the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your, your blessings. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Now, Lord, bless the gifts as well as the gift givers. Multiply these gifts. Increase them that we can use them to proclaim your name across the land. May we use them to engage in ministry, making disciples of Jesus Christ and feeding the hungry. And may we use them to help those who come to us in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. A couple of short announcements. Here's the first one. Thank you so much right there. Just, you can play low.
but it's got to be real low. Um, okay. Esther, Sister Esther Williams has an announcement from the fall festival. We're going to start with that, then we'll come back to these. All right. If you want to, just yes. don't, don't get too close to it. Oh, all right. Good morning, good morning. Uh, praises be to God. Um, in October, we had a fall festival, and it was a success. We had a lot of people coming, and... Um, we, uh, and I just want to thank everyone for participating and making it a success. We need you to come to our rehearsals. We need you to come yes. to um, our church uh, activities. We need yes. you. Uh, we had um, a winner. We asked the, um, our guests that came to the festival to guess how many uh, beans were in a jar, and uh, we have a winner, and uh, we invite her to come to the church today, and I'm praying that she's here today. If you are, her name is, excuse me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, and I don't have my glasses, <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> it's um, Nakivia Wilson. Okay, come, come. Thank you so much for participating. This is from our children ministry, and uh, we invite you to come again and bring your children. I don't know how you heard about us, but we are happy that you were here. Do you have anything to say? Thank you, and we, my son is a part of the Cub Scouts meeting that's held there every Monday, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, well, yeah. to God be the glory for this occasion. Thank you. Uh, you know, I always praise God, and you know, he's welcome to come and join the choir. <laughs> I'm recruiting. <laughs> and there were so many helpers that day. You know, I just want, Takia, you were excellent. Thank you. Amanda, you were excellent. Is Amanda here today? No, you know, young folks, come and help us. You know, the, our kids are looking up to you. You know, my grandsons, whenever I could drag them, I drag them in. <laughs> and I praise the Lord for them. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you, Esther. All right, I'm going to start with this one. First of all, on, um, on Wednesday night, we'll continue with Bible study. Join us at uh, 7 p.m. We'll continue with our uh, Bible study. We're moving into the Advent season. And uh, make sure that you have the uh, Zoom link to join in with us. And uh, we'll resume Bible study Wednesday at 7. And is that? Hi, Pastor. I just wanted to reiterate we, we really need you guys to come to rehearsal for the youth and the children and the young adults choir rehearsals. And it's on fourth Saturday and Wednesday, but this um, month is Christmas Day. We sing on fourth Sunday is Christmas Day. Fourth Sunday is Christmas Day. Amen? So if you could just raise your hand if you're gonna be here. So we'll know right now if you'll be here. Can you raise your hand? Are you gonna sing in the choir? We wanna see you guys. We need you here. We need your children here. They're not gonna get here unless you bring them. Amen? We need everybody here, amen? Come on, y'all, we need you here. Point to yourself. Say, they need me. Say, they need me. Christmas Day, December. All right, thank you. Amen. I'm, I wasn't going to use that test on them. That's Christmas Day. Yes. So some parents got to get up and be yes, doing something. But um, all right. So uh, 
you've got that. Second thing I do want you to be aware of, early voting has begun, and that is uh, we have that available today. I know some folk tried to vote yesterday, but they weren't open, weren't prepared, but early voting from 12 to 5 today. How many locations do we have? Uh, See? <laughs> there are six locations, and I know that the senator has a flyer or some flyers. Make sure you can check with her, and uh, she can give you more information on that. But from 12 to 5 today, make sure you vote early. Go ahead and vote. Vote as soon as you can. Take your friends with you. Anyone who voted before, if you didn't vote before, you can't vote in this election, but if you voted before, make sure you go out and vote again. We don't need anybody in office talking about vampires and werewolf and all that kind of foolishness. I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry, I apologize. Lord, forgive me after the election. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Bible study on Wednesday um, and, and we are into the Christmas season. Christmas Day will be fourth Sunday. Fourth Sunday will actually be Christmas Day. And so we'll be here. I know I'll be here. And whoever's here with me, that's who will be here. And we'll have a good worship. And uh, so we'll invite you back to that. I'm hoping that we can have our musical service on third Sunday. So just putting that out there so our musicians can go ahead and work on some musical selections. And Brother Reed and I will be contacting all of them so that everybody can be prepared for third Sunday. Um, and there's this last thing. We held our Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference uh, at the beginning of this month, the United Methodist Church, those of us in the southeastern region, met at Lake Junaluska the first week of November. And we elected a bishop. Um, of those bishops that were elected, we have now found out that North Georgia, the North Georgia Episcopal area, will receive her first African-American female bishop. Let's put that up there. Bishop Robin Dees. Bishop Robin Dees. She was elected there on Thursday uh, while we were there at Lake Junaluska and appointed to come to North Georgia. So North Georgia will have for the first time a black bishop who will also be a black woman. And uh, some folk are already mad about that, but we don't care. We don't care. Uh, Bishop Dees is coming to, her, to us. Her first day will be January 1st of 2023. That means that uh, our present bishop, Bishop Sue Halpert Johnson, will be leaving us, and she'll be going to the Virginia, Virginia Episcopal area. But there will be a, um, I'm not ready for it yet, but go ahead and leave her up there. Uh, there will be a uh, service to remember her and celebrate her time here on December the 4th, and we'll send out an email to include that for you uh, this week. That's again Bishop Deese. Across the nation that week, across the nation during that first week of November, we also elected three other uh, African Americans to the office of bishop to serve in various other areas, and one of them is Bishop Ken Kenneth. Um, Bigham Tai or Bigham Sai, Tasai, uh, Bishop Kenneth Bigham Sai or Tasai, I think it's pronounced. And the next one is Bishop uh, D. Uh, Will Williamston, Bishop D. Williamston. And the last one is Bishop Cedric Bridgefoot, and he's out in the uh, California uh, area. I am not sure. Did we hear that he's going to be up in the Alaska area or not? I'm not sure, now I'll have to check that, but somebody was whispering that to me and I'm not sure. But these were the four bishops that were, four ebony bishops elected that week. But our bishop will be Bishop Robin Dees. So just wanted to share that with us so we can be up to date on everything. Brother Turner, would you just stand up and, and greet us and say hello? Uh, we, we love that you're here and thank you that you are here with us today. Say a word to us please, sir, a greeting. 
<laughs> Good morning, church. It's always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord, and it's always good to be in Andrew's Chapel. Thank you, Pastor and Andrew's Chapel, for being a staple in this community for so many years, because you truly, truly have made a difference here in Clayton County. Uh, 147 years? Yes, oh, wow, that's a long time, long time. And just imagine everything that has transpired over the years while this church was here. So I thank you as being the chairman of this county for all that you have done and will continue to do because we truly need you because these are some dire times and we need prayer and we need God and we need God in, in, in not only in the church house but in school house because these kids and even the, the bigger kids in high school and colleges need that protection. They need to be protected by the blood of Jesus. So please continue to pray for them, continue to pray for our county, get out and vote, get out and vote. This, you know, it might not be a race for the control of the Senate right now, but it is a race for sanity, all right? Look at who's race. I'm not gonna be like the faster now. <laughs> but if you want somebody who you can be proud of that's gonna represent you, then you need to get out and vote. And I don't have to say who you think that may be because it's probably the only one that can finish a complete sentence. But I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 We have had a wonderful time. I'm not going to even try to call everybody's name, but with all of our young people that have participated in the service today, please stand up. And our adults that work with them, please stand up. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Our acolytes are coming. Our Advent readers. Lazarus, thank you, brother. How long are you here? Is he still here back there? There he is. Okay, he'll be here for a few more days. <laughs> it's like this, five years or until Uncle Sam says something else. But, <laughs> but we're glad he'll be here for five years. Amen. Young folk, come on. And um, why don't you, let's close out on that, uh, uh, what was that you were playing? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you as we give thanks on the, on the way out of this. Everybody, please stand. Yeah. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Murders and robbers seem to be safe, but you've been my protection every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for <laughs> Let's receive our benediction. God, we thank you today. You've blessed us. You've kept us. You have fed us with your word. Now, Lord, lead us and guide us as we go from this place. Use us to bring glory to your name. And may you gain all of the glory, honor, and praise. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him who is able to keep us and present us on that day with exceeding joy. To God our Father be glory. To God the Son be honor. To God the Holy Spirit be power. To this true triune God be all. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. God bless you. Go in peace. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm coming by your house for some pie in just a minute. You all have a great day and a great week. God bless you. Good to see everybody today.